welcome to Drum Lessons with Mr. G. This is the first in a series of drum lessons. For anybody who wants to learn to play the drums, I'm Mr. G, your host, and um, we're going to start out very basic and very simple. Um, you might know me from my Do Try This at Home episodes or from 30 Seconds with Mr. G, but um, I also write music and have a band. The band that I'm in is called Thus Us and um, I play drums and I do some vocals as well. Um, in this episode, the first of the series, um, I'm going to start with extreme basics. When I say extreme basics, we're talking about just incredibly basic stuff for somebody who's never attempted to play drums before. To start with, there are two different types of grips. What you're going to need to learn to play drums, by the way, you don't need a drum set. If you want to learn to play rock and roll drums or any type of rock beats, you won't be needing a drum set right off the bat. You're going to need to learn the basics first. If you start with the basics and work your way into more difficult things, and if you master the basics um, that I'm about to start teaching you, you will definitely um, have a lot more success than just sitting down behind a drum set and just banging all over the place. So to start with, there's two different basic grips. There's a classic grip, which is like this. You'll notice that my hand has the stick between the two middle fingers and then cradled in where basically it rests where my thumb meets my hand, like that. This allows you to twist your wrist in order to make a beat onto a drum's head. The right hand in this particular grip holds the stick in a more classic way, like you've probably seen an overhand grip like this. That's one of the grip methods with the left hand and the right hand. Another method is both hands being held overhand like this, both of the sticks being held, I should say, overhand. Um, to be honest with you, this grip is not as versatile as this grip. This grip's harder to master, but I play this way and any type of music, and to be perfectly honest, this is easier for me. I learned this way, and you'll find that a lot of your more polished drummers, whether they're rock drummers, jazz drummers, will use this grip or at least know this grip and are able to use it. Um, I believe um, the drummer for the police, I believe, uses this grip. Um, I know that Neil Peart from Rush has moved to this grip in recent years from the classic overhand grip. But whichever feels comfortable for you, go ahead and use. Um, that's the grip. Let's move on to basic counting. We're going to just talk about four, four beats. Four slash four. Basically that means that there are four beats in each measure. Um, we're going to start with a fairly slow tempo like one, two, three, four. Um, the only thing you're going to need again is a pair of sticks. Buy some sticks that are medium weight to start with and learn whether you like lighter sticks or heavier sticks as you work your way further into these lessons. Um, to start with, your basic thing that you must learn is you must learn to count. In the four beat pattern per measure, it is counted like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you count out measures, it would be one, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. And the each incrementing number at the beginning of each measure is the measure that you're actually playing. Um, I'm not going to show you how to read music, drum music. I'm just going to do this all by, by ear so that you won't actually be reading music. Um, when you start to get comfortable with counting, you want to add in, those are whole notes that you're counting. One, two, three, four. Those are all downbeats. One, two, three, four. There's also that the measure of four beats can be sliced and diced differently. You can have one and two and three and four and where you're actually counting the downbeat one and two and three and four and you'll notice the upbeat and it's the and of each whole note so it'd be the and of one the and of two the and of three those would be half notes um, you can move into quarter notes where you'd be counting those like this one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a so it's one e and uh. I'm actually playing now all of the notes, but you could also go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now notice still on the and is the upbeat. 
Now, what you need to learn is to be able to tap your foot. You need to tap your foot on the one, two, three, and four beats. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Keep your right foot tapping those beats. No matter what your right hand is doing, we're not even gonna mess with the left hand today. Whatever your right hand, this one, is doing, you want your right foot to be counting one, two, three, four. Now, we're gonna start with going on the one and the and on our right hand. So we're gonna go one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. But our foot's gonna be doing one, two, three, four. So go one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Now, when you get perfectly comfortable with doing that, you need to make it second nature. You have to be able to do that in your sleep. You have to be able to count with your mouth, tap with your foot on one, two, three, four, and play one and 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 two and and with your right hand. One and two and three and four and foot, one, two, three, four. You need to count it. You can either count it one, two, three, four, or one and two and three and four and one, like that. Now, when you get down, when you get that down pat, and I'm talking about really, 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 when you get that down to a science where, like I said, you're doing it while walking around the house, while eating dinner, and it's just second nature to you. You don't have to even try and you're doing it. Then and only then, we'll move on to the left hand. In the next episode, or in the next part of this series, I will be adding the left hand, which would be hitting a snare drum. By the way, this would be hitting either a ride cymbal or a hi-hat. Your foot, your right foot, would be hitting the bass drum. That was the thumping that you heard, actually. That's the floorboards in my house, but in real life, it would be the bass drum. Stay tuned, get that down, and we'll do another episode here, another basic, I shouldn't say episode. We'll do part two. Um, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, it'll be a few days, and we'll move into part two. So, practice, practice, practice. Trust me, this seems really lame probably. It seems like, oh, come on, teach us something more difficult. You've got to learn the basics before you can get into the more complex parts of the drum beats. I'm Mr. G. Thanks for watching this uh, episode. I haven't really named it yet. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to call it um, Drumming with Mr. G. Drum Lessons. Drum Lessons with Mr. G. Sounds good. Have a great night and practice. And you don't need a drum set yet. In fact, you might never need one. You can uh, play with pots and pans if you need to. I know a lot of great drummers that started out playing that way. So I'll talk to you next time. Have a great night.